one of the very hard challenges is forming the words using certain number of letters of the English alphabet. In this question, you are presented with 10 letters and you need to form the word using all the letters only once. The letters are N, V, A, O, I, T and T, I, O, M. Do you see the word here? Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe 20 to 30 seconds. Hopefully you solved it because I am moving forward and revealing the solution. As you might have guessed, the word is motivation. Let me spell it for you. M-O-T-I-V-A-T-I-O-N And the definition of the motivation is that motivation is a reason person acts or behave in particular way. It is also a process that initiates, guides and maintains goal-oriented behaviors. Believe it or not, but doing more practice exercises helps you get better with the skill of forming the word. For example, if you start with the bottom right corner, you can form the word motivation. You see M-O and then you swap T-I and then if you continue, you go V-A T-I-O-N. You can solve these types of challenges better if you do more crosswords and puzzles. Very frequently, you might get tested on how quickly you can form the words using letters of the English alphabet. In our case, you're presented with nine letters and you need to form the word using all the letters only once. The letters are R, E, P, X, E, T, E, S, I. Do you see the word? Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe 10 to 15 seconds, to see if you can answer the question. Ready or not, I am going to reveal the answer, which is the word expertise. And the definition of expertise is an exceptionally high level of skills, knowledge or performance in a particular task or within a given domain. To better solve these types of challenges, try to look at the presented letters and try to form the word. For example, if you start in the middle and go E-X-P-E-R-T-I-S-E, you can definitely form the word expertise. In this interesting but tricky question, you need to count the number of circles. You're presented with unusual shape and you have four different choices based on your selection. Choice A, 10 circles. Choice B, 11 circles. Choice C, two circles and choice D, one circle. Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can count correctly. Did you figure it out? I told you that this was a tricky question. As you might have figured out, there is only one circle in the middle. Other shapes are just ovals and shapes of a different kinds. When you do these types of questions in the test, watch out and be prepared for these types of unusual and tricky questions. Here is an interesting problem where you need to count the number of squares in the presented shape. The correct number is one of four different choices. Choice A, 22. Choice B, 10. Choice C, 18. And choice D, 14. Take a close look at the picture to see if you can come up with the right solution. I was really impressed, but there are 18 squares in this picture. Let me show them all to you. 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Do you see any additional ones? It is totally possible that I missed one of the squares. And if you do see any additional ones, please make sure to post them in comments. And now, here's the question for you to try your skills. You need to determine how many triangles are shown on the screen. 
you have four different choices. Choice A, 8. Choice B, 10. Choice C, 12. And choice D, 14. Feel free to pause this video to calculate the right answer. And make sure to post your solution in comments so I can give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck. Here's an interesting question from the recent test. You need to figure out the word from the five letters you see on the screen. The letters are H, A, B, E, and C. Do you see the word? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds, maybe 20 seconds. You can pause this video to see if you can figure it out on your own. Make sure to use all the letters and make sure to use each of the letters once. Ready or not, I'm going to move forward and share with you my solution. But keep in mind that a lot of times multiple words can be formed. So if you see another word, please make sure to share it in comments. The solution I found is the word beach. Let me spell it for you. B E A C H. Do you see any other solutions? Make sure to post them in comments. And if you'd like to improve your ability to guess the words, you can play word games, read a lot, and practice crosswords and puzzles. A lot of you are interested and ask me, how can I help others? One of the ways you can help other people is by sharing the latest questions you see as part of the assessment test. And when you share, please make sure to also include how you answered them. Please share the question you recently encountered in the comment section of this video. And if you know the answers, please share them as well. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. I love this question because it truly makes you think to determine the final answer. You need to determine which number has the lowest value. And you have four different choices. Choice A, one third plus 0 0.4. Choice B, one plus 2.1. Choice C, 0 0.2 plus 0 0.31. And choice D, six tenth. Give yourself a few seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. The tricky part here is that the question is designed to make you do a mental math. To get to the final answer, you need to simplify all the options. For example, option A, 1 third plus 0 0.4 equals 0 0.33 plus 0 0.4, which is 0 0.73. Choice B, 1 plus 2.1 equals 3.1. Choice C, 0 0.20 plus 0 0.31 equals 0 0.51 and choice D 6 tenths equals 0 0.6 which means if you look at the answers that option C has the smallest value of 0 0.51 followed by option D A and B was it challenging for you please share your thoughts and suggestions on how to better solve it in comments Here's an interesting question where you need to correctly count the number of squares in a picture. Take a close look and select from one of the following choices. Choice A, 7 squares. Choice B, 8 squares. Choice C, 9 squares. And choice C, 12 squares. Make sure to count inside and outside squares to get to the correct solution. Let me show you the final answer. I counted seven squares in the picture. Obviously, if you have a different answer, please make sure to post your solution in comments. Here are all the squares. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Do you have a different number? I'm looking forward to your response if you counted more or less squares. Here's a tricky question which tests your knowledge of English words. You need to identify all the words that are synonyms to the word large. You're presented with 10 different words. Enormous, petite, insignificant, mammoth, minuscule, colossal, huge, powdered, gigantic, and dissolved. The tricky part here is that there could be between 1 and 10 answers. Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can process the question. Let's move forward and I'll share with you my version of the answer. But obviously, if you have better solutions, feel free to share in comments. 
I found five words that are similar in meaning to the word large. Let me share them all with you. The words enormous, mammoth, colossal, huge, and gigantic are similar in definitions to the word large. Enormous means very large in size. Mammoth means huge. Colossal means extremely large, as well as the word huge has a similar meaning of extremely large. And then finally, the word gigantic means item of a very large size. And finally, something you may or may not know. Practicing questions like this not just helps you increase your English dictionary, but also increases your IQ. Here's the famous four triangle question you regularly observe in the test. You need to calculate the missing number, which is represented by the question mark. And you're presented with four different triangles. Each triangle is of a different color. The first bottom left corner blue triangle has numbers in the corners 2, 2, and 6. The green triangle next to it in the upper right corner has numbers 4, 3, and 1. The purple triangle in the bottom left corner has numbers 3, 5, and 2. And then the last triangle, black triangle, has numbers 0, 1, and then in the upper corner there is a missing number which you need to calculate based on the four different choices. Choice A, 0. Choice B, 1. Choice C, 2. And choice D, 3. Do you see the answer? Let me give you a hint. There is a true calculation and not guessing behind determining what the number is. <laughs> Ready or not, I am going to move forward and reveal the solution to you. As I mentioned, the trick about this problem is that the number can be calculated. And the key to calculate it is to determine the pattern. And then the pattern here is that the numbers in the corresponding corners of the triangles all add up to 10. Let's do the math and start with the bottom left corner. 6 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 equals 10. Let's go to the bottom right corner of the triangle. 2 plus 3 plus 5 plus 0 is also 10. And now, in the same way, let's do the math and calculate the missing number. 2 plus 4 plus 3 plus question mark equals 10. Based on these calculations, question mark equals 1. So the correct choice here is choice B, 1. Keep in mind that sometimes in these types of problems, triangles are colored. And the only reason this is done is to confuse you, to look for the patterns inside the triangles itself. I truly hope that you've nailed this question on your own or learned how to answer similar problems on the test. I love this question because you need to determine relationship between the shapes. And you need to determine which shape has similar relationship to rectangle. If you take a close look, you will see that there are other smaller shapes inside the larger shapes. And you have four different choices to choose from the final answer. Choices A, B, C, and D. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. Have you tried solving it? Were you successful? Let's move forward so we can get to the correct solution together. To determine the correct answer in this case, and in a lot of other cases, you need to look for patterns. And the pattern in this particular case is that to build the relationship, inside shape becomes outside shapes, preserving the number of the inside to outside shapes ratio. If you look closely at the relationship presented in this question, you see that the red triangle has green ovals inside. And it has a relationship to green oval that has red triangles inside. Knowing this, we need to determine relationship of the blue square that has pentagons inside to one of four shapes presented in possible answers. Do you see it now? All you need to do in this particular answer is to take the pentagon which is inside the square, enlarge it, and put blue squares inside. So as you might have guessed, the correct answer here is choice B. Hopefully you've nailed this question on your own and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's the practice problem for you. The day after the day after tomorrow 
is four days before Monday. What day is it today? You have four different choices. Choice A, Sunday. Choice B, Monday. Choice C, Friday. Choice D, Saturday. Feel free to pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. I would like to give you a hint. The best way to solve these types of problems is using reverse calculations. So do you see the answer? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution. Did you figure out the answer? Make sure to post your answer as well as your rationale for solving this problem in the comment section of this video. Thanks for participating and good luck! Here is the frequent test problem where you need to determine the age of the family members. Today, a father is three times as old as his son. After 15 years, the father will be twice as old as his son. What is the father's present age? And you have four different choices. Choice A, 40 years. Choice B, 45 years. Choice C, 50 years. And choice D, 55 years. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can come up with the solution. One of the ways to solve this problem is to take the number from the solution and see if it will work the math. But instead of doing that, we're going to build the expression and calculate the father's present age. In the first step, we're going to introduce two variables. Variable x will represent age of the son today, and variable y will represent father's age today. So our first formula is 3x equals y which indicates that today father is three times older than his son. After 15 years, our expression will be different. The new expression will be y equals 2x plus 15. Because in both cases y is the same, we can build a new expression 3x equals 2x plus 15. Once we simplify, 3x minus 2x will equal 15. And after completing the calculations, x will be equal 15 and y will be equal 45. Based on this, today's age of the son is 15 years old, which means that after 15 years, son will be 30 years old and father will be 60 years old. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar age problems on the test. Here's the cool question that you frequently get on the test. You're presented with four different letters and you need to guess the word using all letters presented. The letters we have are W, O, B, and L. Can you guess the word? Give yourself 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Ready or not, let's go ahead and reveal the solution. The correct answer here is ball, which is spelled as B, O, W, and L. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is the interesting challenge you might frequently see on the test. You need to determine minimum time for people to cross the bridge. Every person moves at individual speed and four people can cross the bridge in different durations. They can cross it in three, seven, 13 and 17 minutes respectively. The trick here is that only two people can cross the bridge at the same time. You need to determine what is the minimum time for four people to cross the bridge. You are presented with four different choices. Choice A, 17 minutes. Choice B, 20 minutes. Choice C, 34 minutes. And choice D, 12 minutes. Are you ready for the challenge? Let's move forward and get to the correct solution together. As you might have determined, certain sequence provides the best efficiency for travelers to cross the bridge. Let's give each traveler the number. Based on the speed, this person can cross the bridge. We will first send number 17 and 7 at the same time to cross the bridge. After 7 minutes, Number 7 finished crossing the bridge. And number 17 needs additional 10 minutes to complete the travel. Let's now send number 13. After additional 10 minutes, 
number 17 reaches the finish line and number 13 needs three more minutes to complete the travel. Let's now send number three. Both number three and number 13 reach destination at the same time after additional three minutes. And total time it took for travelers to cross the bridge would be seven plus 10 plus three equals 20 minutes. So the correct answer here is choice B, 20 minutes. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is one of my favorite questions where you need to determine next number in the sequence. You are presented with four rectangles. Each rectangle contains letters. There are four letters in each rectangle. Three rectangles contain letters. And you need to determine the letters in the fourth rectangle. What's interesting is that the upper row of the letters is bold and the lower row of the letters in the rectangles is the regular font. You need to determine item that comes next in the sequence and you're presented with the four different choices. Choices A, B, C and D. Take a close look to see if you can determine the answer. As I mentioned, this is one of my most favorite questions. Let's move forward so I can share the solution with you. To answer this question correctly, you need to know letters of the English alphabet, as well as you need to know a little bit of the math. And my advice to you, always look for patterns, because you would need the pattern to solve this question. So let's first look at the pattern. As you might have guessed, letters of the English alphabet are incremented here by the certain number. Increment number is different for each section of the rectangle. And the decryption key, if you're familiar with encryption and decryption, is 1, 2, 3 and 7. Let's look into details. Let's start with the upper left corner of the rectangle. And look at the existing sequence. You see that the letters are B, C, D, and they match to English alphabet one to one. So the next letter would be E. And it, but if you look at the set of answers, choices A, B, and C all have letter E in the upper left corner. Now let's look at the upper right corner of the rectangles. And then you see that in the main sequence, the letters are I, K, and M. And if you know English alphabet, H, I, J, which is missing K, L, next is M, and O, which means that the increment is 2, which matches the second number in our decryption key. If we look at the answer, we already know that the correct choice here is choice A, because the upper row letters are E and O only in this choice. But the question is done in such way that you can continue the logic and determine decryption key for the bottom row as well. If you're interested, bottom left corner, we have three number differences in the second row, and the correct choice here would be choice B. And in the bottom right corner, there is a seven number increment, and the correct letter choice here would be choice V. So as I already mentioned, the correct choice here is choice A. Hopefully you've learned something, and now not just know how to answer similar problems on the test but also learned about simple encryption and decryption logic you can use with the letters of the alphabet. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please give us a like and consider subscribing. Thanks for all your endorsement, support and patronage. For additional helpful information, please make sure to check out links in the description. For detailed list of available resources, I encourage you to check out resources page on our website howtoanalyzedata.net slash resources. If you know someone who would benefit from this content, please consider sharing the link. Please leave the feedback, corrections, or suggestions in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.